at 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, M.D. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AIM Impact on Your Health. AIM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AIM Impact on Your Health, heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, and fascinating health topics, and of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, well, we had a get em up out of town version of the show on Friday. It was slightly different. Went over a very interesting topic, first timer for us on soy, in particular called the soy deception, with the author of the book on that subject, Dr. David Brownstein, who you know very well. Now, we're going to recap some of those things about soy today because I think it's so earth shatteringly important that you do understand this uh, issue of soy as well as you can because it does have health consequences if you do not. Also, too, I want to be able to discuss with you uh, an interesting article that came straight out of the Trib Review last week, I'm sure it was also in the Post-Gazette, regarding LDL particle size. Now, where have you heard that before? Certainly here, certainly over the last year and a half, well, just uh, has made it to the uh, mass media. There's a controversy out there. They say doctors are divided over whether or not to order the LDL particle size. You'll see what we mean by that and why there is a controversy out there. And uh, I claim it'll be a long time before you ever see LDL particle sizes ordered by your own family doctor. Well, then open it up to you because it is a day where, well, not having Friday to allow you to vent. We'll allow you to vent today. Anything on your mind is okay with me with respect to taking over the show. You, If you have a question, feel free to give us a call at 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. I'll wait for your knock on the door, and I will let you in the store. Now let's take a look at the calendar and see how things are shaping up. About a week from now, we're going to have Roland Thomas back with us. He's going to be discussing the product line of BAC, the bioengineered algae concentrates, which I claim are the all-inclusives when it comes to vitamins and mineral supplements. Uh, oftentimes asked, and I'm asked very frequently, uh, what do I need to take? What are, if I wanted to start the supplement regime, what do I have to make sure is in that regime? And so I easily rattle off, rattle off six different categories of, of, of uh, substances to take, like the vitamins, the minerals, the fats, the enzymes, and the list goes on and on and on, and easily get up to six once you start including every single one individually. Well, I claim that the F3 that we've been featuring now for coming up on a year uh, does all of that and then some uh, with uh, a product developed by Dr. Michael Kiriak, a Soviet scientist who has teamed up with Roland Thomas, going to be our guest next Monday. We'll be talking about the F3 line of bioengineered algae concentrates in particular within the context of a, a rampant disease now sweeping across uh, this part of the world, type 2 diabetes, and the role that the F3s may take in the correction of that problem. On Wednesday next week, Susan Smith-Jones returns, and uh, it's because the holidays are returning. We flipped the page today. This is the last day of October. It is, hey, how about that snow this weekend? Was that something else? Um, it's Halloween tonight, and we flipped the page. That by tomorrow, we are in the month of November, and the holidays are just around the corner. So Susan wants to discuss um, 10 tips how not to gain weight over the holidays, which I think would be very, very appropriate. Now, uh, other things I want to bring to your attention. Uh, the MCG testing now fully in swing. I hope you take advantage of the offer. Uh, a wonderful way to learn about the status of your coronary arteries. Uh, a very important status for all of us to know, but without the severe invasiveness 
of the gold standard. The gold standard happens to be uh, the cardiac catheterization, and nobody on this earth wants to just willy-nilly submit themselves to do one. I don't even think it's legal, medical legal, to do that uh, without very good clinical reasons for it. Um, nonetheless, uh, with MCG testing, which is done in a completely uh, innocuous environment, we're going to be lying on a bed in a very quiet room, uh, fully clothed, a clip around each of the extremities, both ankles and both wrists, and then one lead off the left side of the chest. In six minutes, five different tests are run. It takes 82 seconds for each test. Uh, it's stored in the computer. We download that information at the end of the day and send it off to be analyzed. Now, your results are compared with a database of some 42,000 plus individuals those individuals have certainly had the MCG test, but they had one other test that did have the gold standard test, and that is each and every one of them had the cardiac catheterization that we all want to avoid. But in so doing, they have demonstrated that given the 160 data points that are being assessed during the test, and believe you me, I, I just am completely honest about how it can do that, because electronics is not one of my strong suits. But nonetheless, I take it as face value that it can be done. Anyway, your 160 data points are compared with a database of each and every individual with their, of the 42,000 that is, with their 160 data points. And we can extrapolate from that exactly what the status of your coronary arteries are within 91% accuracy. That's pretty doggone good for lying on a bed in a six-minute test with a completely non-threatening environment. This allows us, through a numerical score of somewhere between 0 and 20, to find out how you stack up with respect to your coronary arteries and allows us to intervene and do what I believe is the real beauty of what this test is all about, change the coronary arteries to improve over time. And uh, unfortunately, I think that uh, in the conventional world, who has invented the device, completely approves the use of the device. Insurance covers a device. Nonetheless, uh, once the results are in, I find a, a profession, the entire medical profession, a little bit impotent over the inability to do a doggone thing about whatever it uncovers. In fact, unfortunately, the way I see the test being used is that it's a preliminary moving toward when the day may come that you'll need a cath. The way I hear that it is being used by the conventional medical community is that the doctor will say, oh my God, look at this test result this time. It's time to move to a cardiac catheterization. A complete, I believe, inaccurate way to use the test. Much better to find out what your status is and then make those corrections so as to improve you and have documentation and objectivity determined that the improvements are taking place. Now, MCG testing, certainly done here in the office. Now we have procured a device uh, in the month of November, and uh, we're coming to that date very shortly. The month of November we'll have testing in our offices on the 10th of um, November. That is a Thursday. If you are listening to me now and uh, listening to the show and think you might like to have that test done, Give us a call at 724-942-3002, and we'll get you slotted for a time on that day. Now, this is really a uh, an opportunity for those who listen to the show who really are not patients here at my facility and want to find out how they can you know, take part in, in the kind of things that we offer. Now, that's the day for you to give us a call. Now, that is if you are very convenient to me in the South Hills. If you are not, and particularly if you are in the uh, eastern part of the city, out near the Monroeville area, or in the Monroeville area, or any points in that region, we start in the month of November bringing the testing to um, uh, Dr. Caminas' office of Health Services on Mossside Boulevard, and we'll do those tests on the 22nd, which is a Tuesday. So, here in the South Hills, November 10th, out there in the Monroeville region and area on the 22nd, 
give us a call here. Don't call Dr. Kermunis' office. Uh, we'll coordinate uh, between the offices if you are scheduled to see Dr. Kermunis anyway. Uh, or you may just come in to have this test done because it is in your backyard. And uh, we'll, we'll arrange for a time slot for you. That will be on the 22nd. So MCG testing, you'll be hearing it over and over again. We'll, well, now that we have a device, we want to keep offering the opportunity for you to get this test done. Based on the score, you should also know if this reveals any sort of advanced coronary artery disease at all. And a numerical score of, well, it goes somewhere between 0 and 20. Zero, of course, would mean that there is no coronary artery disease at all. Um, but as you approach numbers of four and five, this is already in the moderate to severe area. And uh, if you have scored in that region, you're allowed to get this test done every three months. What a great way, objectively, to determine that you can improve this. And we fully expect to be able to do that. So um, this is a test that's not a one time and over. It is a one time to find out what category uh, you fall in. And if you have very little to no coronary artery disease detected, you are at least allowed to receive this test annually. If you have slightly more amounts of plaque, you're allowed to get the test every six months. And if you have moderate to severe amounts of plaque, you'll be able to get the test every three months while we put in play a program to get this thing turned around. So that's how we're going to be using MCG testing here. The date's November 10th in the McBerry office, November 22nd in the Monroeville office as we start there. Once again, we're now returning back to uh, Monroeville. We were there once before in Dr. Caminas' old facility, which is now completely empty. It sits right on Mossite Boulevard itself. And um, uh, he just, we, we overburdened him. He had no room left. And finally, uh, now that there's plenty of room in the new facility, uh, we're able to return to schedule either one of the places, 724-942-3002. Also, unique things we do here, 8CG testing, the most, the earliest possible way, that's a better way to put this, the earliest possible way that you can detect if cancer, if a cancer is present, I believe would be through the 8CG testing human chorionic gonadotropin, so-called pregnancy hormone, is not just that. It is also a detectable hormone marker for all forms of cancer. I refer you to the show that we did with Dr. Emil Shandel. It was done on the 10th of October. Please refer to it. Go to the archives. And then we did a repeat of the uh, major elements of that show on the 12th. So there were back-to-back -back shows where we launched our status as the draw station to do HCG testing. So uh, if you have a mind to want to find out what your status is with any cancer, whether you've been diagnosed with cancer or not, it's still within your domain and your control with the testing done at uh, American Metabolic Laboratories located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We act as the draw station. We send the labs off, and uh, within a week or so, the results do come back. And we'll let it go at that. All right, folks. Um, let's take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to recap, I think as best as I might be able to, what we learned on Friday with respect to the soy deception. If you miss this on Friday, you won't be able to. I'll go over the 11 points, the 11 drawbacks, the 11 problems with the use of soy. Be back in a moment. See you then. This is Dennis Shea Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, 
and host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, M.D., is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Have you been to the doctor lately? Was fatigue top of your complaint list? Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a dream in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, the fruit of the spirit. The blessings of fruit of the spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit parade product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but fruit of the spirit help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the spirit, a blessing. For your good health, fruit of the spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugars. That's 1-800-442-3793. For your good health, call them now, 1-800-442-3793. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Heard here in KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you today on a Monday morning version of the show. And uh, because Friday was a little different, uh, we had a guest, uh, Dr. David Brownstein. We are opening up the show today for you to come on in, in here and uh, well, get it off your chest. You, you bit that, bit the, that pressure build up over the entire week, and it's time to relieve it. Uh, if it's in the form of a question, feel free to do so. If you want to make a comment, feel free to do that at number 412-825-6262. And we do have a knock on the door, so come on in the store. Hello, and welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Yes, good morning, Dr. Courtney. Hi. Uh, question on the MCG testing. You said insurance covers it. I have I work HMO. Will that cover it? Yeah, um, right, the, the, the uh, neat thing about this is that the premier heart people, the people that actually distribute the device, are in active negotiations with all insurers. Right now, the one insurer that is uh, holding things up, and they're not completely holding up, is UPMC, okay? But Highmark is absolutely completely on board with this testing. UPMC's association should be right around the corner, but uh, they're always... Uh, there's annual contracts that each and every year they got to re-sign them anyway. But any of the Highmark products, any form of them, are are, are approved uh, for uh, insurance coverage, yes. Okay, thank you. I got a quick comment. I had your Courtney panel done with Dr. Kimmins' office. Oh, all right. And I, I'm to see my a new PCP tomorrow when I was seeing she left the office. So it's going to be interesting to see what you say about the test and see what she'll say tomorrow. <laughs> Well, when you say shield, you, you're talking about uh, your conventional medical doctor, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you're going to bring, you're going to spring all ten tests on her. <laughs> you're going to spring the Courtney panel on your conventional doctor. Now, I'd love, as I usually like to say this, to be a fly on the wall whenever you bring those labs to her because I think things are going to get uncomfortable. I believe that um, they're just uh, funny i got a funny feeling inside that uh, these are not going to be welcome laboratory results. And I'll say this about it. Every single one of those 10 tests, and we're going to talk about them today a bit, simply because the new, one of the newer tests, the LDL particle size, which, by the way, you did get if you got the Courtney panel done, one of the 10 tests is LDL particle size. Yeah, there's small size and large size listed on there. Yeah, and um, it's the small size, as we'll find out a little later on in the show today, that is extremely problematic and is quite a risk factor with respect to coronary artery disease. The article that I'll be quoting from um, a little later on in the show is that doctors are divided in whether it should be ordered or not. But let me just say this. All 10 of these tests Every single one of the parameters are well known by all doctors to be injurious to arteries. Every single one of them is known to be an inflammatory risk factor. Yet, as it stands right now, only one of these tests is routinely ordered, and that's the cholesterol panel. All doctors are very comfortable working with it. 
They've set new numbers for how to treat it, and that's where the use of the statin drugs come in. The problem is, for the other nine, because there is no medication, in order to have a dent or, or change any of the other nine, these other nine never get ordered. And that's the problem with the LDL particle size we'll be talking about this morning. So I say you're going to make your doctor a little uncomfortable if you expect her to comment on the 10 tests that you had drawn in your Courtney panel uh, when, in fact, she knows that in each and every case, except for cholesterol, she can't do anything about it. And that's, that's going to be an uncomfortable situation you're going to put her in. Are you ready for that? Well, so you're saying this visit may be one and done, huh? Well, not necessarily. I mean, I, I, I strongly urge every single one of you to maintain a good relationship with your family doctor, but I think you're going about a way to make your relationship strained because you're going to be presenting information uh, to your doctor that really shouldn't be, she be asking for that information on you. I mean, isn't that the way it's supposed to work? The doctor's supposed to ask for the test and then discuss them? I think you're, so. Yeah, you're, uh, you're going to be turning the tables on this particular relationship because you have asked for the test. You're going to bring the test to her, and she's going to feel, I believe, very uncomfortable. I'd love to think I'm different on this or that I've that been proven wrong on this. And if I am, I'll be the first to apologize. I just don't see that as a great encounter between you and your doctor. And I want to be a fly on the wall, if you could just record that for me. If I should take a pocket tape recorder. Oh, well, I mean, I wouldn't want to. Uh, no, I, I, please don't do that. My goodness gracious, I don't want to really embarrass these doctors more than they, they should be already. But uh, it's just you're bringing information that is not going to, in the best case scenario, if she doesn't respond by being upset or being challenged, she will be totally un unable to help you resolve them. And when I say them, I'm talking about nine out of the ten tests that you have gotten done now through a Courtney panel. So it, uh, please call back and tell us all how it went. Uh, and uh, let's just say be ready to uh, – uh, does your, does your, uh, she says she's your new PCP. She's brand new. Is that right? Well, yeah, the, the one I was seeing has left the office, so I had to switch to a different person within the office. Well, and knowing that, because I know this voice very well, uh, knowing that you were pretty much up on these alternative uh, items, how did your other doctor deal with you? Were you in a, did you have a good relationship with him? I guess he tolerated me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you may be already starting to, to point out what may have to happen between you and your new doctor. She'll have to tolerate you, uh, but... Uh, uh, to get the help that you're going to need from it, well, you're at the right source now, and uh, we'll we'll keep uh, working with you to keep you on the straight and narrow, uh, despite your new doctor. Although, please keep her. Everybody needs her own family doctor. She'll come to know you very well, and she'll act as your liaison with the medical community in your area. So, uh, don't be too harsh on her. Okay? I'll uh, try not to. Okay. Absolutely great. Nice hearing your voice again. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. I'll see you in the 20 seconds. Okay. Oh, going to be there in the 20 seconds. Very good. Uh, yeah, folks, this thing about them. Uh, I often went and asked, oh, hey, could you please, uh, oh, here, here's the one I get asked. Look, I, um, I would, I'm going to be seeing my doctor coming up next week or next month, and I would sure like to get ordered all those labs that you call the Courtney panel. Could you, could you fax me? or send me or, or tell me what the 10 labs are in the Courtney panel so I can then ask my doctor to order them for me. And um, although that sounds like a very modest request, it turns out to put you in a bad situation. And the reason is that when you go to your doctor, and I've and easily provided you with a list of, of, of the labs, I have no problem doing that but it tends to cause a lot of disharmony between you and your doctor when you show up and say, you know what, I've been reading or I've been listening or I know this doctor, his name is Dr. Courtney, and he says there's these 10 lab tests that, well, that he'd like to be able to evaluate to know my cardiovascular status, and I asked him to tell me what they were so you could order them. Wow, that does not turn out to be a very good uh, foot forward 
with respect to you and your doctor. Uh, usually this ends up in a very heated interchange, abruptly ending with uh, any of those labs, and I mean any of them, getting ordered at all. Anyway, I wish the gentleman luck. I hear another knock on the door. Come on to the store. Hello, hello and welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Courtney. Hi. Um, I had a question um, sort of relating to the um, particle size of your cholesterol. Oh, yeah. Um, about a year and a half ago, I had one of those VAT tests done. Um, but when you get the results, it was the first one I ever had done. But when you get the results, I don't have them here with me now. Um, the breakdown as far as when you get the results, the sheet that just determines, like, um, I don't know, it's very detailed. It's very hard to um, understand, I guess, as a layperson. Could you describe maybe when someone gets a VAP test, just generally speaking? When, when, you, say you, VAP, when you say VAP test, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? No, it was the particle. Okay, that's right. I mean, I, I never heard it called VAP because you say V-A-P, VAP, or VAP? VAP, yeah. Okay. I'm unfamiliar with that tag, but let's swing and discuss this thing. It's come up twice, and I plan on talking about it anyway, so we might as well start this discussion while two patients in a row, or two patients, two callers in a row, have brought it to our attention. Look, the LDL particle size is a very relatively new test. I've been getting it uh, on all of my patients for about the last year and a half. Uh, that's just when it made it on the scene, and... Uh, I order it uh, not as a VAP test, like, like I say, I never, don't know what the acronym means, but I do ask for LDL particle size. Now, when it comes to LDL, uh, of course, that's been well known as a parameter found in your lipid panel, consisting of cholesterol, triglyceride, HDL, and LDL for a long, long time. Uh, it is the most sought-after lab by the conventional medical community that there is. Uh, and uh, I will tell you that it is not uncommon to find all of those parameters, all within normal limits, in patients who have one heck of a cardiac history. I mean, I have patients who've had multiple heart attacks, have completely normal lipid panels, and this has been very confusing to them. How can that be, they say, how can I have such a cardiovascular history when all of my labs are normal? Well. This is where the Courtney panel originally came in because all the labs are nine more labs than just the lipid panel, and the newest one on the block is the LDL particle size. Now, you're right. When you look at the um, uh, results sheet, it is very confusing. The thing is sometimes a page and a half long, and it goes into rather large descriptions of all the forms of LDL that they are. However, what you really need to do is just focus on one. Go down through the list, ignore every single thing on the list, and when you come to small LDL, which is only one line of what might be 30 or 40 lines, that's the only one that has merit. Is that the fluffy? No, it's not fluffy. It's just small LDL. It has nothing to do with fluffy. Okay. The reason why small, small LDL is such a problem is that it's a form of LDL that is so small that is so tiny that it actually can work itself down in between the cracks found at the membrane level. And if small LDL, which is an oxidizable form of LDL, just like all the other sizes are, the small LDL, which becomes lodged in that crack, should then oxidize, that the damage done to the membrane from that form of oxidation is exponentially much more harmful to you than the oxidation of any of the other forms. That's why small LDL is the problem that it is. And I can't even uh, emphasize how often it happens where we get the lipid panel and we look at cholesterol and let just throw some numbers out. Let's say a person has a 190 cholesterol in there, triglycerides are 90 in their HDL, maybe even very good. Maybe it's a you know, 60 or 70. And the LDL is 80. Now, you couldn't get any better looking numbers if you're just looking at numbers than that, because that is a very admirable lipid panel. However, on that same patient, when we're going through all these other lab tests, when we get to the LDL particle size, the normal value for a small LDL goes up to 527. I even forget what the uh, 
the uh, units are measured in the nan nanometers or something. Anyway, uh, 527 is the top limit of the normal, and I have people sometimes 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. Now the story starts to really unveil itself where the problem lies. Not that that the lipid panel is off, not that the LDL, by looking at the total number, is off, but that disproportionately that individual has a much higher quantity of small LDL disproportionately than they should, and by virtue of it, they are at risk because of the harm done when that form of LDL oxidizes. Am I clear or did I confuse you? I think so. I think that you're clear or you think that you've been confused? <laughs> Which one? I think I'm clear. Oh, okay, good. Um, the only thing I remember is because an ND is actually the one who ran the test, and I took it to my PCP, and his just basic um, overall um, assumption, he said, um, was that um, the LDL that I did have, I remember him saying, don't be totally concerned that it's, you know, it wasn't elevated, but it was, you know, a little bit, um, I don't know, in the in the middle range. He said your fluffy component is high of that LDAL. I guess that's what the ZAP test does. It, it says what the good part of the uh, LDL and the bad part ratio is. And he said you have more of the fluffy that, com that comprise the LDL for you. Uh, yeah, he said that, in your yeah, case okay. it's not, yeah, the non-oxidized, like what you were saying. Fluffy is yeah. the non-oxidized. Well, I think what the fluffy is is the fluffy is the unable to work its way into the cracks. It just comes as basic as that. It is, is not able because of the fluffy coat. Now I know what you're talking about, the fluffy yeah. coat. But it can't work itself down in the cracks. So all the other forms of LDL, and by the way, there's five. There's, you know, I mean, they're not really called this, but let's just say there's really, really big, real big, big, not so big, and then there's small. Because the only one that matters is the small and it's no ratio of your fluffies or anything else versus the small. It's what's the amount of small that you have. And if it's under 527, now how they come up with 527, I really don't know. But, you know, if you're coming in with a, a value of 540, I don't think you've got a problem. If you come in with a value of 3,000, and I find that happening, happening frequently, then there is a problem. A problem, unfortunately, that the conventional doctor does not know how to solve. We'll talk about that in just a moment, okay? Okay. Thank you, doctor. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yeah. Let's, uh, this issue with the uh, LDL particle size, you might as well have at it right now and get it, get it off, cleared off the table. <laughs> um, and, of course, allowing you to come on in at any time, 412-825-6262, if you have any other questions, either related or not related to this LDL Article size. But um, true, we've been ordering this over the last year and a half. Um, it is uh, well known to the conventional medical community that this is one of those tests that have a bearing on one's cardiovascular risk because of the ability of any one of those 10 labs, lipid panel just being one of them, if they are in a level much too high, that can, that can then cause inflammation to the lining of arteries. And it should be the job of all doctors to identify when this inflammation component is operational and then, in a vernacular way, put out the fires. Uh, if you find a fire raging, you should want to go extinguish it. Unfortunately, you have to know what the parameter is first that you're looking for. You have to go and, and, and look for it. And then when you find it, if it is a problem for that particular patient, you must put out the flames. Well, the first step is, if you don't go looking for it at all to begin with, how do you even know if you have flames? This is my first criticism of the conventional medical world because of the 10 known factors, known, by the way, to all doctors, not just to me, but in medical science, all doctors know about how harmful any one of the 10 labs, conveniently referred to as the Courtney panel, play a role in uh, 
in, inflaming the sun and lining of arteries, yet they only order one test, the lipid panel, uh, because they're able, they do have medications to put out that fire. And I say once again, that even though they are aware of the other nine parameters and the harm that could be caused by any one of those nine, either by itself or in combination with others of the nine, to cause an adverse problem within the lining of an artery, they have no, they, meaning the conventional medical community, has no medicine to put out that fire. Not having any medicine to do so, they have elected, and I claim will continue to elect, to not ask for the test, to learn if there is a fire or not, because if you think about it, to learn that there's a fire, and then to know that you have nothing with which to put out the fire, why would you be asking to learn if there's a fire or not in the first place? And there is lies the rub. And so the article of last week, Doctors Divided, and this was in the Trib Review, they got a pretty good, they got a what, two, four, five column spread. It was on, uh, wasn't on page one, it was on, hey, fourth page. Um, but they say doctors divided over the use of an extra cholesterol test. And, uh, of course, it then goes into describing this uh, new test. Not really new, it's been out quite a while. But um, I, these are the catchy lines, in my opinion. It said in the article, and I'm quoting now, cardiologists are divided over the usefulness of that approach. That approach meaning to order the test. Um, a quote by a doctor, a cardiologist by the name of Dr. Nika Goldberg of New York says, I see a lot of people being confused, said the doctor. You don't know how to make sense of the information. Well, now, isn't that a convenient response on the part of the good Dr. Goldberg? It's not that people don't know how to make sense of the information. Because if you say that it's an inflammatory factor, that small LDL particle size, if in overabundance, is a problem. And it, by the way, it is a problem. And it is always, if it's elevated, a problem. No one should be confused about elevations in that particular parameter being hazardous and injurious. Let there be no confusion. Here's where the confusion lies, and here's why I claim that it's going to be quite a while before the doctors become undivided over this problem and order this test, because they're not, they, they feel already uh, impotent in being able to respond to a patient's request with anything other than the lipid profile. That's the only particular um, form of, uh, of a laboratory analysis that can lead to them being able to help. They want to help. Yet, if you don't look at ways of being able to correct this without medicines, and by the way, there are plenty of ways to do it, then to order a test to alarm a patient and then not being able to assist in any way to alleviate the fears of that patient, I believe that it's more than likely the uh, thought of the doctor, why am I going to open a can of worms up that I have no solution for? And so I find it amazing that an article comes out talking about this new test, uh, maybe not going into as much detail as we just did about the role the test plays, because it certainly did not do it. All I talked about was uh, the fact that uh, I found this to be interesting. Yet up to half of patients diagnosed with uh, disease, with heart disease, apparently have normal levels of LDL cholesterol. Now, that was a statistic that I really enjoyed reading because I really didn't know what the statistic was. But if over half of the people have normal LDLs, then to explain, and that's supposedly the bad cholesterol, which really isn't accurate, but nonetheless, I'll use the term right now. Um, the uh, LDL cholesterol, if they're going to be normal, 
a lot of patients will say, why is my LDL normal? Why am I still, and why do I have it? Why have I had heart problems? Of course, the answer is there are nine other things that can be out of whack, and they do cause problems. We're just not ordering them, and we're going to stick with the one that we have some control over now. So the doctors may be divided. Um, in a discussion uh, held behind closed doors, I don't believe they're going to be uh, divided over their universal uh, lack of interest on this particular item. LDL cholesterol isn't going to be ordered anytime soon by your local doctor, and it is an important parameter. By the way, let's say, let's say it is elevated. What should be done about it? And the real fact of the matter is you cannot selectively lower, number one, LDL. So that's how we got into the big problem to begin with. Doctors have known since the inception of the statin drugs that statin drugs were, were to be used not for an elevated cholesterol. They were to be used for an elevated LDL because the LDL is the injurious, injurious component the cholesterol is not. What has happened, however, is that over time, this has become so confused by the conventional medical community that they can't distinguish between LDL and cholesterol. To them, they just run it all together and call it all cholesterol. Come up with statin drugs that can't lower LDL alone. It will have to lower all forms of cholesterol, and that's why the total cholesterol levels are being trashed and pushed well in the below the 200 range, sometimes as low as 120 or 130, which really is, is a health emergency in my opinion. Now, what do you do about an LDL? You don't lower it. You prevent it from being oxidized, whether it's elevated in small LDL or just an overabundance of all forms of LDL. It's the small LDL that's really the problem. You prevent it from being oxidized by taking, of all things, an antioxidant. These are powerful words. They have a powerful amount of significance behind them. If you take the right amounts of antioxidants, you will prevent any damage to the arteries from occurring because of an elevation in either regular old LDL or small LDL any form of inflammation due to that kind of a, uh, uh, a, a oxidation process, and that's exactly what it is, can be canceled out. And so there you have the story about doctors divided on LDL. Okay, let's take a short break. When we return, uh, if you want to take over and bring your particular item to the forefront so we can discuss it, 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. When we come back, a bit of an epilogue on the soy deception. Be right back. Want to help your family eat healthier? Instead of learning to disguise tofu in wondrous ways, how about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fries, pizza, and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Fruit of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Fruit of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole fruit puree made from fresh fruits native to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Fruit of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Fruit of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Fruit of the Spirit. Give your loved ones a blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. You become confused about how best to manage your health. It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow it seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. 
If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Heard here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you then, a Monday morning version of the show. Slightly different for us. No guests today. Well, let's just say you're the guest if you want to make it happen. Uh, 412-825-6262 is the number to do that. You can give us a call and uh, have a question, make a comment. Anything on your mind is okay with me. We do have a knock on the door. Come on in the store. Hello and welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Hello? For you. Yes, go right ahead. Uh, my husband is going through a series of test blood work um, because he has had joint pain from head to toe. Okay. Um, most of the things that they tested him for, like Lyme disease and um, rheumatism, arthritis, have shown up negative, but what it's showing high is his C-reactive protein. Okay. It's a 33, and I believe it's supposed to be under 5. Um, yeah, the uh, it should be under 1, actually, but that's neither here nor there. Of course, a C-reactive protein. By the way, I'd ask one other question. If you happen to know it, fine. It would really help. Do you know, may know, happen to know what the SED rate is, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate? Have you ever heard have you ever heard that term before? I did, and it was high. I'm trying, let me see, fifty one. Okay, now that certainly does indicate it helps me a bit because um the uh, there's two kinds of C-reactive protein, heart specific and general, and I think you're referring to the general form, uh, uh, meaning that there is a one heck of the inflammation going on in your husband's system, and that's being uh, documented by the fact that the parameters that indicate inflammation are up. They would be the said rate, which should be well below 5, okay? Okay. And uh, the C-reactive protein, which there are two forms of. There is the heart-specific, which I'm very familiar with because I work with all the time. And then the general form of C-reactive protein, which is not heart-specific, which would go hand-in-hand with an elevated sed rate. So let's just say that your husband's on fire. He's got inflammation everywhere. Uh, they've checked for the organisms. Now they'll need to check for the immune, okay? And the immune system parameters, if they weren't included in the last um, uh, assault of the laboratories, are going to be in the next assault. Because if you're having such an inflammation going on, I agree that it would either have to be chemicals, and so it could be true that any one of those 10 Courtney blood tests could be indicative of one of the reasons. Number two would be microorganisms, microbes, in the form of viruses. Now, you said you already checked for Lyme disease, but there probably was Epstein-Barr and a whole other bunch of viruses that are checked for. Yes. Viruses, like, yeah, I'm sure. Our viruses, bacteria. Uh, fungi and parasites. And now the third realm of testing will have to go and move toward the antibodies because there could be an immune system gone awry that's attacking him and all of his joints, which would certainly cause an inflammation. So these are the three categories that have to be explored. It appears from listening to you that uh, the microbes have been explored and um, the chemicals probably have not. I'd recommend uh, this Courtney panel. All those, those 10 blood tests can absolutely cause an elevation in the CRP. It's not usual, however, to find such an elevation in the SED rate if just one of those 10 Courtney blood tests would be out of whack. So it really looks to me like the next place that we have to go 
is to check the autoimmune component where a person's immune system is literally attacking them, and that would create one heck of an elevation in said rates and CRPs. So I hope that's where the doctors go next. In fact, I'm sure of it. These are smart people. They'll know where to go, and uh, that'll be the next round. Okay, ma'am? Okay. Did you, can you recommend something that he could take for inflammation other than these drugs, these um, drugs that they want to well, give him? Well, uh, absolutely. They probably got him on steroids now, though. They do. Oh, yeah. Um, and you know something? When, when it comes to something that is uh, hot, as this the situation now appears to be, I'm not going to be in any way trying to play a backseat doctor here. He may very well need those steroids for a short amount of time. It really has to be focused on what's the cause, because at levels that you describe with that amount of inflammation, somebody's got to put the fire out, not even knowing the cause for now, so as to be able to identify it and then correct it. So, ma'am, although um, I don't like the use of steroids except in the most extreme of circumstances, this may be one of those circumstances. Follow your doctors here. I think they're, they're going to do them justice by using what they need to put out the fire for sure now while they go ahead and run down what the cause of the fire is, all right? Right. And, uh, and so they get, get ready for the next round where the immune system gets uh, looked at with respect to antibodies against anything, and they have so many different blood tests to run to ultimately identify the cause of this inflammation in your husband. Steroids may be needed in the meantime. I hate them, but they're, they're, they're like this double-edged sword. On the one hand, they have a whole bunch of problems associated with it, but on the other, they will put out a fire on a short-term basis. I can understand their use, and I fully support it. All right, ma'am? Yes, but in the meantime, can you recommend, I, you used to talk about a vitamin C that was a liquid that was... Um... Oh, these are antioxidants, yeah. Uh, antioxidants can uh, prevent um, uh, oxidation processes, which do lead to inflammation, absolutely. And so high-dose vitamin C in the form of vitamin C that I'm talking about is a fat-soluble form of it where uh, a little... One teaspoon of, that has 990 milligrams of vitamin C has the effectiveness of 18,000 milligrams taken of any other form. Yet, um, I usually prescribe it once I know what the cause is. So I'm saying it's going to have two different problems of attack. Putting out the fire, steroids will certainly do that. Uh, but you don't know what the cause of that fire is. And if it happens to be due to an antibody reaction, vitamin C will not be helpful. Okay. Vitamin C will not work. Okay. If it's due to chemicals, vitamin C will work. So you see, you've got three categories of harm, uh, chemicals, microbes, and antibodies. And the vitamin C will be helpful in one of them, and you don't know which one just yet. Okay. okay. And until you find out, you've got to put out the fires. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Very good. I finally understood where she was going with it. Very, very helpful. Uh, if you got any other questions, we got we got some time here. Give us a call at four one two eight two five six two six two. I'm uh, going to uh, I've got his book. His being a Dr. Brownfield's book in my hand. I thought the show on Friday was an excellent show. Uh, there is well, is it is it really sinister? Is there a soy deception going on? Let's just put it this way: there is a lot of misunderstanding about soy going on because I think the very place we started with uh, Dr. Brownstein on Friday was that in general, I think it was assumed by us all that soy is like a health food. Like this is this real healthy stuff that by taking soy, this is somehow wonderfully uh, appropriate for anybody. And as it turns out, wow, is that one off the mark? Second point, when it comes to the crops that are grown in our country, it didn't surprise me to learn that corn was the number one crop. By the way, corn, all of it, is genetically modified. The number two crop, and I didn't know this, is soy, because it's used in just about everything. It's a cheap, inexpensive, highly lucrative crop for farmers to plant, 
and evidently they're planting and harvesting it in record numbers. But I found out about soy, and I think deserves some emphasis, is the fact that if dealing with um, unfermented soil, so soy, not soil, unfermented soy, this is the form of soy that has all of the problems associated with it. If you're dealing with fermented soy, there are no health problems associated with it. But here's the real problem. In the United States, at least, 99% of all soy is placed in the products and is unfermented. We'll let it go with that. We'll pick up some of this stuff on Wednesday. Till then, I hear bomb noise in the background. It's signaling our time out of here. See you on Wednesday. We'll pick up where we left off. We'll allow you to come on in and continue to set the agenda on Wednesday. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney saying so long for an impact on your health. by Dennis J. Courtney, M.D., director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002.